Welcome to this Google Plus Hangout from the site of the Democratic National Convention in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm Doyle McManus of the Los Angeles Times, and we have an all-star lineup here today of journalists, young people, experts to talk about the youth vote and what it will mean this year. Uh, we have Andrew Jenks, correspondent of MTV's Power of 12, Meg Turney, host at SourceFed.com and a contributor to The Phil DeFranco Show. Alejandra Salinas, president of the College Democrats and a student at the Boston College Law School. Kathleen Decker, politics editor of the Los Angeles Times. Felicia Sullivan, a researcher at the Center for Information and Research on Civic Learning and Engagement at Tufts University. And Nicholas Rafiti, a student at Willow International Center, a community college uh, near Fresno in the Central Valley of California. And here's what we want to talk about. President Obama won election in 2008 in large part because of a huge turnout of young voters, voters from 18 to 29. The question is, can he do that again? Uh, what do the polls tell us? Uh, what can he do to replicate that turnout this time? And will this week's convention, can any convention make a difference? Uh, Felicia, let's start with you. Uh, you've done the research, you've got the data. Uh, how do we know about how young people feel this year about this election and how does that differ from four years ago? Sure. So just to give you a bit of um, overview, there are about 46 million young people, 18 to 29, who are eligible to vote in this year's uh, federal election. That's about 22 percent of the electoral population. Um, and about 17 million of those are first time voters, people who this is their very first presidential election to be involved. I know there's a lot of um, uh, concern that, that in the 2008 election that this was a, a unique election when young people turned out, and indeed about 51% of young people did turn out to vote. Um, but that election was not necessarily unique in the history of elections of young people, so certainly there were large turnouts in both um, 2004 and prior to that to 1992. So this, the last turnout was, was uh, unique for the previous one, but not, not overall something un, unusual. In, in the sort of turnout of youth vote. Um, I think what we found in looking at the data is that youth vote is really the result of really concerted effort on the part of campaigns to really focus on that demographic and really educate them and really get them to turn out. So in 2008, the Obama, administra the Obama candidacy or campaign at that time really was focusing on that demographic as a turnout and they turned out. So I think um, that is really what is the matter. That is really what determines whether or not young people turn out or not. If people actually engage them, talk to them, engage them in the issues, make sure they're registered to vote, make sure they understand where they go to vote and what they need to do to vote, um, and youth will turn out. They're, they're interested and they're engaged, and they're also a very diverse population that are neither wholly liberal or wholly conservative. And some are very engaged and some are not so engaged. Felicia, so, very quick follow up. Yeah. Uh, there has been some polling that suggests that the youngest voters, the ones who didn't have a chance to vote for Barack Obama last time and participate in the enormous energy yeah. of that campaign, are polling very differently, that they are a clo closer to a kind of an even split. Are you seeing that too? Well, I think we did, our most recent poll, which was conducted at the uh, beginning of July, which was before Romney announced his um, Ryan running mate, um, did show that this group perhaps was a little more conservative, although they in general were supporting Obama. The problem is with this young demographic, these first time voters, a large number of them, we just don't know. They're undecided. Over a third of them are undecided. Over a third of them don't know where they stand on the issues. So it's really hard to gauge really which way they're going to turn in the election. So I think that's, you know, from what we can look at, we can see that, yes, maybe more of them are supporting Romney at this point in the election than they supported McCain uh, last time around. Um, but they also are largely unknowns still in this election. And, and I think, you know, the Romney campaign has provided a lot of outreach and, and targeting of this demographic, given the success that the Obama campaign had had in 2008. Okay, Kathy Decker, you've got reporters all over the country looking at this phenomenon. What are they uh, coming back and telling you? Essentially, the, the, the uh, campaigns are breaking these groups into in, in half, the 18 to 29 year olds. You have both campaigns really pushing hard on college campuses to register voters and to get those voters who are historically not terribly reliable um, in terms of coming to the polls to actually show up. Um, Obama's had uh, 
a multiplicity of aids in a whole bunch of states for months and months and months now. And it's really geared up in the last couple of weeks since college students returned to their campuses. Um, Obama himself was at college campuses in battleground states this week and urging a registration, giving website where, where students could get registered to vote. And when um, he mentioned Republicans and there were some scattered boos, he would always come back and say, don't boo, vote. Um, the point being that their support of him is meaningless unless they actually you know, pull the lever. On the other side, on the, lar the sort of higher end um, age-wise of that group, um, the campaigns are going hard on social issues from the Democratic side. And we see this reflected in the, in the conventions as well. They're pushing hard on issues like gay rights, like immigration, um, social issues like abortion and contraception, where those younger voters, and particularly women, are more liberal than their L We are having a little bit of technical difficulty. We hope to be back with you in seconds. Issues if you poll people okay. about what they're worried about, they're all worried about the economy. But those are threshold issues that define candidates for voters and allow them to come in and decide whether they're even going to give a candidate a chance. Andrew Jenks, what are you seeing and hearing? You know, there's a lot of talk about the level of enthusiasm among young voters just isn't where it was to, uh, to in 2008. Where is that now? And do you think a convention can do anything to change that? I don't know if a convention could do anything to change um, that. I think, you know, a convention generally talks in broader strokes, whereas I think what can change it is when the president or Mitt Romney go to college campuses and talk to young people. And I think it's best when they talk specifics. I know a lot of times when they talk to senior citizens or vets, they really are specific about what they're going to do. And a lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of time when they talk at college campuses, it's still kind of very broad. And I think talking specifics really helps. I was talking to a few undecided um, young voters the other day, and they actually were saying how they didn't care so much about the social issues, even though they were quite passionate about where they stood on them. But what they really cared about was the economy, jobs, student debt. And that everything else almost took a back seat, and it was just jobs, 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 jobs. And um, I, think that's, I think that is ultimately what's, what's really going to push people to, the, uh, to, vote, to voting or not voting. And, and did they know that President Obama has done stuff on student loans? They knew that he had um, done um, you know, uh, a few things, but I think President Obama could work a, a little bit more on messaging and getting it out there for sure. I know he obviously has done stuff. It's a matter of letting young people know that. Uh, Meg Turney, same questions to you. What are, what are you seeing? What are you hearing? And do you think a convention can move the needle? Um, I agree that President Obama hasn't done a great job of t tooting his own horn, so to speak, and telling people and educating people what he's already done, especially with student debt. I mean, that's uh, an issue to students that obviously really matters and to ex-students like myself that still really, really matters. I don't think conventions are that exciting to young people. Um, they skew older. The participants we're seeing down there are much older. Um, their speeches are geared toward older folks. Um, we saw the RNC a lot of... Um, a lot of parts of speeches that young voters don't even get the references to. So I don't think they're even thinking about young voters at, at conventions. Um, and like you said, being in college campuses and really talking specifics um, gets students excited. And I think that organizations like Rock the Vote, um, which the Democratic Party has worked very hard to support, those are the kinds of things that are going to get people, young people interested. And I think the Obama campaign in particular has done a good job of making people, young people feel responsible. Here's a kit to get you started, to get your friends registered, to tell your friends how to vote and where to vote and, and to get organized and to make this more of a grassroots campaign because that's what made people so excited about the first election was that it felt very grassroots. Nicholas Rafiti, you're on a college campus uh, uh, right now. What are you seeing? What are you hearing? Is there is there registration going on? Is there organizing going on? And are you and your friends going to be glued to the television set or the laptop screen or the smartphone screen to watch this convention? As far as my friends and myself, as far as we go, uh, we were all passionate about at least voting. And that's what I hear from a lot of my peers, a lot of people in my classes. Um, while we do have disagreements on, you know, whether we're left, whether we're right, if we're independent, we're all kind of psyching each other up to vote because I think now we're realizing that it's a very important thing and it's something that honestly has been underappreciated by other people around our age. Um, along with that, 
the political uh, the political process itself has been a little bit uh, these past few years has been uh, dis- a little bit discouraging just because you know with the 2008 Obama campaign it was yes we can and everything else and then it's kind of like we were riding that high and these past few years we had to scale back our hopes just because you know as far as Congress goes and things like that we realized one person can't do it all um, while we're talking about things such as social issues and those are things that I know I, I get passionate about and my friends get passionate about and sometimes you know we bump heads um, we are concerned about the jobs I mean I live in Fresno California and Fresno County is one of the worst when you look at jobs rates and I, I felt that myself you know I've had a few jobs but it's almost as if as soon as you can get one you're let go it's seasonal things like that so having that stability that economic stability is quickly becoming the the major issue that we're looking at you know it's not just about oh well, look I'm a businessman I can create jobs or look what I've done for you as far as student loans it's we just want jobs to be honest we want it we want to work we want to be able to put gas in our tank pay for auto insurance pay for our books you know 150 200 dollars for books some even more so those those are really the issues that we're looking at right now and have you heard a convincing answer from one candidate or the other on that big question on jobs personally um as far as President Obama goes, I've been watching the TV and it seems as if his campaign has just been on the defensive so far. It's having to react to a lot of the RNC's allegations that, oh, they've done nothing, that this entire, this entire uh, economic boondoggle has been their fault, which in my opinion isn't true. Other people may disagree. Um, so because they've been on the defensive, I haven't heard too much out of the Obama campaign. Out of the Romney campaign, what I've been hearing has just been a lot of, okay, look, we've had, we've had problems in the past. We have this guy, he's a businessman, and he has a plan. And anytime anybody asks, what is that plan or something like that, it's always, it's, not, it's just, oh, don't worry, vote for him and you'll see. Vote for him and you'll see. Well, why would I vote for you if I don't know what your, what your plan is, you know? What's the deal with that? I have to know what I'm voting for. Okay, Alejandra Salinas, you're the president of the College Democrats. You're campaigning for President Obama. So here's your chance to tell Nicholas why President Obama is the man for him. Well, first off, I just want to talk about, you know, as a national president, I get to travel across the country and I'm seeing such incredible energy. Uh, For example, we as an organization have grown tremendously since 2008. In states like Iowa, North Carolina, Florida, and Colorado, we've gone from 10 to 15 chapters per state to 20 to 30 chapters per state. In Ohio, last weekend, our college organizers registered over 10,000 new voters. If you look at the delegates here at this convention, there are a record amount of young people being represented as delegates. And the fact that I'm going to have the opportunity to address the Democratic National Convention on Thursday evening in the stadium as an LGBT young Latina is a great example that this president stands with our community. And the reason why the energy continues from 2008 is because the president has been our advocate every single day in office. He's doubled investments in Pell Grants. He's ended the war in Iraq. He's, he's created 20, 29 months of consecutive job growth, 4.5 million new jobs in the public sector. And I will say, when I started at the University of Texas at Austin, there were no recruiters on campus. The financial crisis had just hit. And it was a very tangible example of where our economy was going. And now in 2012, the recruiters are back. The interview rooms are filled up and college students feel so much better about their prospects. Just at my university, I was able to see the stark differences that President Obama was able to create. I know that's why young people are going to continue to come out for him. And then we have to look at the other side. What does Mitt Romney say when it comes to college affordability? Shop around or borrow from your parents. Most college students are in a position to borrow from their parents. Most college students need some help in order to make college more affordable. And President Obama understands that. He gets what it's like to pay student loans, and that's why he's been our advocate, and he's going to continue to do so moving forward, and why young people will come out for him again, once again, in record numbers in this election cycle. Alejandro, you just answered what my next question was going to be, which is (laughs) what speakers we should be watching for in this convention (laughs) who are going to speak to young people. You're going to be out there on Thursday night. Let me ask uh, Andrew and then Meg, 
are there any speakers out here that you're you're especially uh, uh, keyed up for? I mean, for middle-aged guys like me, Bill Clinton is a big deal, but I did the math. Nobody under 34 ever saw <laughs> Bill Clinton's name on a ballot. It kind of scared me a little bit. So, so the two questions are, what are you looking for at this convention? And how do you think most young people are going to get that information? They're not going to be watching three hours of infomercial a night. How are they going to see it, Andrew? I mean, I think you have to be realistic, and it's going to be what President Obama's speech is. I mean, I think you can twist it whatever way you want, but it's President Obama. And, you know, I watched his convention speech last night, actually, from four years ago. And I think there's this mis misconception that millennials don't want to hear politicians debate. You know, four years ago, during his convention speech, President Obama referenced John McCain 31 times. And so they do want to hear the debate. I think they just want to hear it in a, in a civil way. And I think that's what they'll kind of be looking for in President Obama's speech, is laying out the specifics of, of the differences between him and, and Mitt Romney, um, and seeing if he can still have that same tone uh, that he had four years ago. Uh, I have to agree. I think President Obama is going to obviously be the big draw for everyone. Um, he's been very a very ca charismatic order that the youth are ready to relate to. Um, I think one of the things, besides touting what he's done in the last four years, I think you're right. I think he wants people want to hear what he's going to do that's different than Mitt Romney. And I felt like at the RNC, a lot of the Republican speeches we heard were very, oh, this was wrong and this was bad. And it was very trash talky, but it wasn't, here's what we're going to do that's better. It was, it was very uh, a very odd mix of... Of, let's have a civil campaign, but also this guy ran the country into the ground and we're not going to talk about ourselves at all. So I think the Democrats need to turn it around and be more about, yes, this is wrong. Romney wants to do this specific thing, make it very specific, don't make it broad strokes, and say, here's what I'm going to do and here's why it's better for you. Felicia Sullivan, what do we know about where young voters are absorbing information this cycle? Well, you know, I think that there's this misconception that young people mostly get their information from the Internet and their smartphones and Facebook. And actually, the strategies that work for other people work for young people. So getting information from their parents, from their friends, talking to their friends and talking to their classmates, talking, you know, and actually being parts of organizations that ask them to get involved and do things. So I think those personal connections and personal contacts are the ways in which young people get engaged. And I also think thinking about young people who are not on college campuses, about 40% of young people in the age demographic of 18 to 29s have never set foot on a college campus as a student. So that's I think- a, That's a great point. You know, yeah, so I think, I think the, the strategies work for the general population, work for young people. Kathy Decker, what stone have we left unturned here? What, uh, what, what, what else is out there in the landscape that, that we ought to be looking at? Well, I think that um, to build on something that Felicia said, um, they may get their information in, in, in similar ways to older voters, but I wonder if they disperse information in a different way, that their use of social media is a propellant for any campaign that they seize on. Um, we saw that a lot in 2008, where a lot of the Obama campaign effort was built on um, Facebook, and I don't even know if Twitter was all that big then, but but a lot of what they're building into the campaign now is trying to get young, enthusiastic supporters to fan the flames with their friends and to expand the reach of, the, of any campaign, whether they're Obama you know, campaign supporters or whether they're Romney supporters. Both campaigns are trying that. And I think you know, they may get their information from a variety of more traditional sources, but they dispense it differently. And, and that's instrumental in a campaign extending its reach in a free way to the campaign, by the way. They don't have to pay for it. Um, and that could be key in a lot of areas where, like North Carolina, like Virginia, Ohio, Iowa, where there are a lot of college students and a lot of younger people who aren't in college who can, can sort of hear the message in the way that they want to hear it. And of course, one of the things we know, and this is a very old fashioned uh, lesson of campaigning, is that people believe and value information they hear from their friends and a recommendation on who to vote for from your friends far more intensely than they do uh, an anonymous commercial on television and that's that's one of the reasons the obama campaign has invested here okay let me let me wrap up with one in an environment let me wrap up with one question for Nicholas. Nicholas, this is a slightly unfair question, but I'm going to pitch it to you anyway. Down at the All Republican right. convention in Tampa, Paul Ryan uh, unleashed a very, uh, a very sharp line. He said, uh, 
He said that there were too many 20-somethings back at home looking at the faded Obama poster on the wall and wondering when they were going to be able to start their lives. So my question is, do you have a faded Obama poster on your wall? (laughs) Well, I don't have a faded Obama poster on my wall. I was 17 in the 2008 campaign, so I just missed being able to vote. And back then, I was, in, in my opinion, I was... Going, I would have voted for Obama, um, but one thing I think that young people are really kind of savvy on are picking up exactly who we should actually be focusing uh, focusing on as far as, you know, the idea of whose fault is it, whose fault is it. Well, it's not one man. It's not. It wouldn't be President Obama, and let's say it was McCain and things had gone differently, we'd still be in the kind of the same cycle economic cycle right now it wouldn't have been the president honestly i think what most young people are looking for are or would be the congress when we look at congress and we hear whether we agree with it or not we hear bills being popped up and they're just constantly either filibustered or they're just debated down to death and so what we see is i think for me personally what i've seen is president obama trying to put forth good plans, great ideas, trying to work with the other side of the aisle, and the and the Congress has just said no. We, you know, the Senate has been, they, the Senate itself has been great as far as being a bit bipartisan and equal, but when you look at the House of Representatives, it's nothing but just a bunch of he said, she said, a bunch of charts and things like that, and it's not actual discussion, it's just a bunch of politics. And personally, I'm sick of that, and I know my friends as well, they're sick of seeing that. And, and, so, and, you're, and you're not alone. You know, Congress's approval rating is about 9%, and John McCain has said that basically boils it down to their immediate families and people <laughs> on their payroll. Okay, this has been great. I want to thank this panel uh, uh, for, for joining us at this at this uh, Hangout, uh, co-produced by Google Plus and the Los Angeles Times, and I especially want to thank uh, all of you for watching and joining us. I'm Doyle McManus from the Los Angeles Times.